my lords, tonight's news is absolute insanity as there's twist after twist after twist and we are learning our efforts to sign Amora Dion is now off, the deal is over and you'll never believe the player we are targeting from Atletico Madrid to act as the replacement in this deal. We got a ton to break down today my friends so hit that like button, share your thoughts and opinions and do not forget to watch today's match review against Inter Milan. Hope you enjoy and let's get straight into things. We get the quick report out of the way first as we've learned that our new signing Caleb Wiley from Atalanta United has now departed on loan and will be going to Strasbourg until the end of the season. Now there's big belief at this club that if Caleb Wiley has a successful loan spell at Strasbourg there is a future possibility for him the following season. Now there are some comparisons with himself and Mal Augusto in terms of the rise he could make in the first team and listen in terms of age we don't care how young you are unless you're good enough. So I'm really curious to see what Caleb Wiley can bring because I feel like this guy has a bit of a, like an Alfonso Davis style in his game. I'm not saying he's an identical player to him but there's a similarity in terms of the explosiveness, the dribbling ability, um, his qualities in the final third. I think getting an introduction to life in Europe at Strasbourg, especially in Liga, which is great for young players, a physical league and a more demanding tactical league than what he's used to back in the MLS. I'm really curious to see what this 19 year old can do. But as we know, now that he's set to go to Strasbourg on loan, it means that we only have one more international loan spot left and reports suggest that Strasbourg really want Jorge Petrovic. We don't know yet if Petrovic is open to moving to Strasbourg, you'd imagine that he wants to be in a team of course that maybe fulfills his professional demands but if I'm Jorge Petrovic and when you consider that we've hired Rosanir to act as a manager that plays in a similar style to what we are now hoping to develop under Maresca, if you're Petrovic one year at Strasbourg could be a great educational year for you to improve on your sweeper keeping abilities, to improve on your playing out from the back, your distribution which is the main thing that I think personally kind of cost them even though I think all of us saw the really nice promise potential in Petrovic's game. So let's see what happens before this window ends because he could potentially be that final loan spot that we can make internationally. So that's the Caleb Wally news out the way. And now, wow, we end things by discussing tonight's ridiculous reports. But to do that, to make sense of it first, let's start off by discussing what the hell is going on with this Amora Dior news. Because we all expected tomorrow to be dominated by the announcement signing of Amora Dion. The last we heard of him, he was already in London finalizing his medical and you know he was literally joining straight up after winning the Olympics with the Spanish squad. I even had an analysis reaction video I was ready to release for tomorrow in preparation for this announcement. So today's news has absolutely shocked me tonight and we learned from El Chigrito, they're the ones to first break this, that this deal was off. Now. I've had to use ChatGBT to translate what the reporter and Marco uh, Benicio said. He was the one to first break the story and essentially it says that it seems like we changed the conditions last minute. That's what he says. Amora Dion's team is pretty confused. And he then goes on to say that our main objective and focus right now is to sign Victor Simhen. The deal is now off. Now I'll share my thoughts and opinions once we get through all this crazy news first because there's more context that got revealed then by Relevo from Spain, a Spanish media. They report the reason behind why we called off this move was based on the fact that we weren't satisfied by Amora Dion passing his medical examination. So he must have failed in a particular area in this medical but they report that Amora Dion is already back in Madrid and he's already back in Spain right now. So we now move on to discussing the English reports and they come courtesy from Ornstein and Romano. Ornstein reveals in The Athletic that the reason this deal was called off was due to a major problem in finalizing the player's contracts. Now we move on to Romano and he reports from the club side that we are still actively now looking to find solutions for this Amora Dion deal. Atletico Madrid cannot afford to risk Alvarez and Gallagher collapsing. So I'm sure both clubs are stressing right now 
But at the moment, we don't know whether this move has collapsed based on late changes in his contracts or based on the player failing a medical at some point, right? In terms of the medical, I think that's quite fascinating though, because listen, we've not been put off signing players who weren't even fit, who already had injuries. Let's not forget last summer, we signed Romeo Lavia, who was already injured at the time. We tried to sign Michael Elise for 35 million when he was injured already at the time too. So I can't imagine there's any serious complication uh, fitness-wise or medical-wise that really would have put us off from completing this move, especially when the player was already in London. The timing of this announcement, it reminds me of last summer's deal for Tyler Adams where essentially the player had agreed terms, was going to complete his medical, was set to become our player until we ended things in the 11th hour to focus our priorities on Lavia and Caicedo. And I just kind of see the similarities between what we're doing with Amora Dion, plus the fact that now our main effort is Victor Asimhen. Now at the time, my first thoughts were, have we purposely tried to find an excuse to cancel this Amora Dion deal, to get this money from that lady for Conor Gallagher, to use it to sign Victor Asimhen? That was my first thoughts. But it seems like there is more to this story. It's time to move on. It really made no sense to me that we were possibly going to consider having Nico Jackson, Asimhen and Amora Dion in the same lineup alongside Mark Yu. Reports mentioned that we could have loaned either Gu or Amora Dion out, but even though I tried to rationalize it, because at the time we all thought this was the reality, this was concrete, it still didn't really sit right with me. It felt a bit hoardy and it didn't really make too much sense. So it seems like maybe we've pulled things in a very aggressive manner. Of course, we risk, of course, ruining a very good club relationship with Atletico Madrid. That's never a good thing to do. Let's remember last summer when uh, Ziyech was close to signing for Paris Saint-Germain until we kind of ruined that deal in the end by not signing the documents at the time. Todd Barley had to personally go to Paris a month later to hold talks with the Paris Saint-Germain board to clear the air. So keeping relationships at this level is important, especially when most of your sale money will come from a handful of clubs that can afford your players to begin with. Right now though, the pressure is on Atletico Madrid. Julian Alvarez has already arrived in Madrid. He's been spotted taking photos with fans. I think he's finalized his medical. It's the same thing for Conor Gallagher, who was announced by Atletico Madrid's official Twitter page. So there's a ton of pressure that this deal does not collapse because these are two big first team key players for Simeone. And Amora Dion was intrinsic to both moves getting finalized and getting completed. I'm sure out of all of this, Amora Dion is maybe low-key a bit happy that this move's fallen through because reports mentioned that he wanted to actually remain at Atletico Madrid. He didn't want to leave Spain and now he has an opportunity now to work under Simeone because I guess now is the perfect time to segue into discussing player that we are in discussions with to act as the makeshift in this deal. Let's now go back to Fabrizio Romano and as he says, Chelsea and Atletico Madrid are now discussing Joao Felix as part of the Gallagher deal. Samuel Moura Dion's deal collapsing and the two clubs don't want Gallagher and Julian Alvarez deals to collapse. Joao Felix is being discussed with Jorge Mendes in London as we speak. <laughs> what is going on man? What is going on? This is absolute mad news. Joao Felix possibly coming back to Chelsea under Maresca with this team. Oh my lord. Wow, this is absolutely nuts. Obviously, when I read this news, I was celebrating like a fool. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yes, I know for my purists, you know, my 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 football heads, I get it. Nini, like, do we really need Joao Felix? How's he gonna work in the system? But I think you guys are not on my channel. Sometimes I just I just love these entertainers. I just love these ballers. I love these brazy players, man. Sometimes the tactics and the system stuff can go in the bin sometimes. I just don't care. But there's a possibility that Joao Felix and players like him can come and play for this club. Listen, I like to be entertained. Shoot me, yeah? I like to be entertained when I watch this play. And I just felt like that season we had him on loan, we got a glimpse of what he could do. He got so much uh, unnecessary criticism, in my opinion, with people missing the point that, listen, that whole season was a write-off. We had a bloated squad, 
There was no proper system, no tactics, and it's naive to think that Joao Felix single-handedly with his ability was going to make sense of a senseless situation. That wasn't going to happen. But even in his loan spell, he demonstrated the individual class and ability that he can bring. All those goals he scored for himself, he created on his own accord. He's shown some beautiful, skillful moments. He's shown some promise. He did show as well too that he was a very likeable figure in the squads. And I know that when he was first signed on loan, a lot of players were actually cool with him coming. Uh, case point, Mason Mount. At the time, reports mentioned that Mount would have been threatened by Joao Felix coming, but I heard that Mount was actually excited and all the players were at the prospects of playing with Joao Felix. He's one of those guys that just has a bit of clout in this game. I don't know why, but right now it seems like Joao Felix is saying, nah, nah, I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm not done. I think this is absolutely mad, but technically it does make sense because realistically, what other players were we going to target from Atletico Madrid? There's no way we go for All Black. That doesn't make sense. I don't think Griezmann would be on our cards. I think he's too old, even though he's a world-class player. Realistically, I can't really see who the other options would have been, but maybe the club are thinking to themselves, listen, we've just captured Pedro Neto, but we still are not satisfied with Mudrik and Raheem Sterling. Mudrik has not shown us much this preseason and yet again it is not enough it is not enough i'm sorry i was really down for this kid i was really blindly supporting him until reality has hit me in the face right now and he is not someone i can rely upon to bring me much in the season with this report being a thing it tells me that maybe if the club are deciding to bring back joao felix maybe we could be open now to allowing one of our wingers to leave we know that raheem sterling is attracting interest from juventus Hopefully something happens there. We've heard that we could be open to selling Noni Madweke if a big offer came in, but I think that would be an absolute mistake. But it does seem like before this window ends, there's a massive possibility that both Asim Hen and Joao Felix could be our players before this trans window closes. My lord. Now, what is going on tonight? <laughs> you know what? To actually think I was thinking to have an early night. I was thinking to be in bed like an hour ago, yeah. I'm thinking I've not been getting much sleep. I need to catch up on things. My skin's breaking out. I'm waking up with like brain fog every morning. It's not being ideal. And then this news drops out from nowhere on a Sunday too, when we got work tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> My Lord, I'm not gonna lie. This news is mad. But right now, <sighs> share your thoughts and opinions. These are only mine. You guys don't have to listen and believe anything I say. I, I want to have a discussion. I want you guys to share your honest thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about this Joao Felix remontada? Are you excited at the prospect to see him again? Or do you think this just sums up clearly? What the hell is going on? We're constantly paying the price for wheelings and dealings and meddling. But most times these deals aren't even coming off, Nini. This ain't the way to build a squad. I don't know where you guys fall in this debate, but please let us know in the comments right now so my friends on that note. I am Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I will see you all tomorrow. Cool.